A very warm welcome again as we gather together for worship. This morning we begin our worship as we sing together that well-known hymn, When We Walk With The Lord In The Light Of His Word. Let us worship together. So we turn to our Lord in prayer. Let us pray. And so, Lord, as we walk with you, as we journey with you, as we're reminded again of your presence with us, so we come to worship you, offering you, Lord, ourselves in this moment, wherever we might be, reminding ourselves that as you promise in Scripture that where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am also. And so we can be assured, Lord, that you are present with us as we share, as we meet. So, Lord, bless our time together. Through the power of your Spirit, Lord, we pray that you would interpret Scripture to our lives, to our hearts, and to the way we live life. So fill us with your Spirit. As we listen to those words read from Scripture, we pray, Lord, 
they would begin to take root in the depths of our souls. So thank you for this moment. Thank you for your grace, your love. Thank you for the gift of your Spirit and the work that he does in our lives. In your precious name we pray. Amen. And so I invite you to hear scripture as it is read to us this morning. Our reading this morning is taken from Galatians 5, verses 16 to 18 and 22 to 26. The Spirit and Human Nature What I say is this, let the Spirit direct your lives and you will not satisfy the desires of human nature. For what our human nature wants is opposed to what the Spirit wants. And what the Spirit wants is opposed to what our human nature wants. These two are enemies. And this means that you cannot do what you want to do. If the Spirit leads you, then you are not subject to the law. But the Spirit produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility and self-control. There is no law against such things as these. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have put to death the human nature with all its passions and desires. The Spirit has given us life. He must also control our lives. We must not be proud or irritate one another or be jealous of one another. This is the word of the Lord. We live in a world of bad news. We live in a world where people lie, people steal, people are governed by corruption to see what they can get out of it. Greed seems to be the nature of everybody's life. People are selfish. People are power hungry, egotistical, narcissistic. And with all that's happening around in our world, it presents for us a huge problem, a massive challenge, resulting in the fact that there is desperate need within humanity, within our world, with the people around us, even with ourselves. And that great need that we face is the need for credibility. Credibility at every level of society. Credibility within the church and outside of the church. We as Christians, we as the church, need to ask ourselves the questions. Are we any different from the world around us? Are we any different from non-Christians? Are we living any differently than those who do not follow Jesus. By that I mean when it comes to dealing with people, with friends, colleagues, clients, tellers at the bank or cashiers in the spa or the pick and pay, taxi drivers, service providers, when it comes to dealing with the issues of power, justice, money, sexuality, when it comes to dealing with the issues of pain and violence and suffering and poverty, do we deal with it any differently than those who do not follow Jesus? Trevor Hudson speaks of a conversation that he had with a friend of his who's a clinical psychologist and has been for many years. And in the conversation he says, that this clinical psychologist who's been dealing with patients for over 30 years made this comment. In my experience, he said, he has found very little difference between those who go to church and those who do not go to church. Are we any different from those who do not follow Jesus? I'm reminded of that atheist philosopher, 
Friedrich Nietzsche, who said the following, I will believe in your saviour when you look more saved. Paul, who writes to us from, who writes to the Galatian church, has some good news for us. So let me read those words again from Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. But the Spirit produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. There is no law against such things as these. We know that passage is the fruit of the Spirit. We've heard it often, we've read it often, we know it well. But as we share around that passage, there are just three concepts that we need to hold on to and keep in the back of our minds while we share. The first concept is that we need to remember that the fruit of the Spirit reflects the character of God. Secondly, that the fruit of the Spirit reflects the commands of Scripture. And thirdly, and probably most importantly, that the fruit of the Spirit is the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Scripture says, the Spirit produces. This is God at work in our lives. And I love that analogy of fruit, because it reminds us that this is not an instantaneous thing. This is not something that happens in one single moment. This is not a quick fix to what we face. There is no fast food spirituality, has no lasting effect. Fruit, the analogy of fruit reminds us that fruit grows slowly. It ripens over time. And so this is a slow process of production in our lives. And so we are challenged to become new, to become a better person, maybe even a different person, to become more. But it always, always takes time. And it's also not about trying harder. We can't just try to be more loving. We can't just try to be more patient or try to be more self-controlled. There's no achieving this growth. It's an inside job. And it's God who grows and works within us. The Holy Spirit grows the fruit within it was Dallas Willard who wrote these words, We can't achieve the fruit of the Spirit by willpower. If we do that, we set ourselves up for failure. And so the growth of the fruit within us is the Holy Spirit at work. It's an inside job. And as Paul writes to the Galatian church, so he writes to each of us giving us a vision of what could be. This passage from Galatians is an invitation to deep inner change, an opportunity for deep, deep transformation in the way we live life in everyday living. And so Paul gives us a pointer to what the Holy Spirit grows within us and what we can become, that we can become more loving, more compassionate and caring, that we can become more joyful, that despite the circumstances that surround us that are sometimes terrible, we can still have an inner joy of who God is and what he means to us, that we can become more peaceful, a peace beyond our understanding, a peace that despite the chaos of our world, we can still find peace with God, that we can become more patient and we begin to realize that everything that's happening around us, as hectic as life is, 
we can patiently wait for God's leading and guiding that we can become more kind that not everything in our world points to retaliation and reaction but we can be more kind in response that we can become more good as opposed to the lure of a sinful world leading us into things that are not good we can become more faithful and through the work of the Spirit within us, we can find an ever stronger binding to our Lord Jesus Christ. We can become more faithful, stronger, stronger in our relationship with Christ. We can also become more humble, recognizing who we are and gaining a deeper and a bigger and a better understanding of exactly who God really is. And we can also become more self-controlled, responding to life with Christ-likeness, becoming more who of Christ wants us to be, becoming more Christ-like, slowly, progressively growing, just as fruit ripens slowly, becoming people of credibility but how do we become how does that become a reality in our everyday lives how does this transformation happen in each and every one of us to grow the fruit of the spirit what really needs to happen is we need to set up a climate for good growth and that climate involves two things firstly dependence we need to be aware that we are dependent upon God for everything. It's the acknowledgement that even in this moment, God is at work in our lives. It is the Holy Spirit who grows us, who grows the fruit within us, who makes all this possible. That we are dependent upon God's Holy Spirit to grow. We reliant upon God this is what God does. And there is nothing that we can do except to respond to our God. The rest is all up to him. God at work, God doing it, God loving us. And so on one hand, we become and we remain dependent upon God and who he is. Linked very closely with that is obedience we need to be obedient if the fruit is going to grow in the right climate we need to be obedient not in the sense of obedient to an army officer who shouts out commands but obedience in the sense that this is what we choose we choose to follow jesus and therefore choose to be obedient to what he calls us to do and how he calls us to live. We hear his commands. We live out those commands to the best of our ability. But always being dependent upon the work of the Holy Spirit within our lives. It's also very important to note that this is a lifelong journey. It is never instantaneous. As disciples we need to seek to learn from God about God. And we need to seek to learn about life in following Jesus. At the same time, so we teach others about God. We show our faith in the way we live. We do this in obedience to him, our choice to follow him. Our response to God needs to keep these two things in balance, dependence and obedience. That will create the correct climate, the best climate for the growth of the fruit of the Spirit in us. And slowly, progressively, we will be transformed.
slowly, progressively, we will become persons of credibility. The challenge to become credible Christ followers. I conclude with a quote from Dallas Willard as he wrote, The greatest issues facing the world today, with all its heartbreaking needs, is whether those who are identified as Christians will become disciples of Jesus Christ, steadily learning from him how to live the life of the kingdom into every corner of human existence. Amen. And so invite us to sing along in our worship as a response. One more step along the world I go. It's from the old to the new. Lord, keep us traveling along with you. We sing together. So we turn again to our Lord in prayer. Let us pray. And so, Lord, we pray that you would keep growing us, fill us with your spirit. May your Holy Spirit do his work within us. Lord, may we willingly be dependent upon you, willingly be obedient to you to allow deep transformation to take place in our lives so that we may become more of who you want us to be. We pray, Lord, that as we do that, you would build a wave of change in our world, in our relationships, in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
And so we conclude our service together as we sing together our benediction now and to him.